introduced in the houses of the parliament and they need to be scrutinized but it is not possible on the part of the parliament to discuss the various reports the various bills clauses by clauses and that is why we have got the concept of the committees we call it as the committee system in the legislature ye kya bhai sahab mumbai wale wo kya kar rahe ho ye kya india gate hai kya ghumne aa rahe ho ha gateway is not gateway of india yaar it is a classroom you are not supposed to disturb the class please all my students get disturbed when some people come they go he loiter here and there and it is a crime to disturb the class whoever you are you are not supposed to disturb the class <coughs> yes now you are going to be the future administrators you should discourage such type of people who come just stand keep standing what is going on are you people are not there in the zoo that they will people will come and monitor you that what you are doing you are adult people you are the we can say uh, you are going to be the administrators of this country you should discourage these type of people even they should not enter the class to see the washroom also even the none of the te non teaching staff will come here even the management should not enter in the class when you are reading something otherwise you people get distracted <coughs> Yes. I was talking to you on the parliamentary committees that uh, the parliament has got various type of functions to discharge the reports of various commissions are presented in the parliament the report of the public undertakings that is presented in the parliament various bills are introduced in the in the parliament and it is not possible on the part of the parliament to discuss all the bills all the reports in detail and that is why we have the committee system in the parliament committees are there to look into specific things give their feedback give their report we have got the committees in the lok sabha as well as in the rajya sabha the committees of the lok sabha the committees of the rajya sabha for example the rules committee of lok sabha the rules committee of rajya sabha ethics committee of lok sabha ethics committee of rajya sabha we are not concerned about those type of committees means they are dealing with a particular house their problems their issues here we are concerned about the committees which work for the parliament as a whole we call them as parliamentary committees committee system is also there in the united states of america there are two types of parliamentary committees one the standing committees the standing committee and the ad hoc committees the standing committee and the ad hoc committees 
स्टैंडिंग कमिटीज आर द परमानेंट कमिटीज दे आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड टू वर्क फॉर द होल ईयर और फॉर स्पेसिफिक टाइम पीरियड दे आर परमानेंट कमिटीज ऑन द अदर हैंड एडहॉक कमिटीज आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड फॉर ए पर्टिकुलर पर्पज नो टाइम फ्रेम इज देयर टेम्पररी कमिटीज एडहॉक कमिटीज टेम्पररी कमिटीज दे सीज टू गिव दे गिव दे रिपोर्ट एंड दे सीज टू एग्जिस्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल ज्वाइंट पार्लियामेंट्री कमिटी ऑन द कॉमनवेल्थ गेम्स a joint parliamentary committee was set up to look into the irregularities of the commonwealth games accounts of the commonwealth games we can have such type of committees it will give the report within 2 months 3 months 1 year 2 years and then it will cease to exist function specific not time specific standing committees time specific permanent committees we are concerned about two types of standing committees <coughs> department related standing committees and finance related standing committees and finance related standing committees department related standing committees there are 17 department related standing committees and each of them have 45 members each each of them have 45 members each now coming to the part that we need to understand apart from this technique we can say the factual things when a bill is introduced in the <coughs> parliament whether in the lok sabha or in the rajya sabha <coughs> the rule of the game is that the bill will not directly be discussed in the houses first of all it will be sent to the concerned department related standing committee for example if a bill is introduced in regard to judicial reforms then the bill has to be first sent to the department related standing committee on law and justice there is a department related standing committee on law and justice department related standing committee on agriculture department related standing committee on social welfare family so we have got based on the ministries based on the ministries so first of all the bill is sent to the concerned department standing committees and those who are aware about the working of the department related standing committees they those people they say that these department related standing committees they act like the mini parliament 45 members are there what they do they scrutinize the bill clause by clause clause by clause so you see it is indirectly putting a check on the government also government also because when a bill is introduced this parliamentary committee will scrutinize it clause by clause it can give suggestions also that what is the lacuna in that particular bill how the bill can be introduced 
how it can be made a better bill. This is the department related standing committees. But the irony is that the recommendations of the department related standing committees are not binding on the parliament. It all depends on the government whether to accept the recommendations or not to accept the recommendations. This is the basic difference between our committee <coughs> system and the committee system which is prevailing in the United States of America. I will tell you these things when I will be critically analyzing the working of the Indian parliament at the end of the discussion. We are more concerned from the examination point of view in the finance related standing committees. There are three finance related standing committees. One is the Public Accounts Committee, the Public Accounts Committee, <coughs> then we have the Estimates Committee, and <coughs> We have the Committee on Public Undertakings. <coughs> committee on Public Undertakings. <coughs> Coming to the first one. The Public Accounts Committee, some facts you need to know because these three committees are important from the prelims point of view, we can expect some questions in the examination from this aspect. PSA as it is popularly known, it consists of 22 members. <coughs> 15 from Lok Sabha. and 7 from Rajya Sabha. Seven from Rajya Sabha. The speaker appoints the chairman The speaker appoints the chairman of the PSA of the PSA. Next. The chairman, the chairman must be A member of the Lok Sabha, a member of the Lok Sabha from the opposition political party, from the opposition political party. Next, no minister can be a member, no minister can be a member of the committee, of the committee. It scrutinizes the report of the CAG. <coughs> it scrutinizes 
the report of the CAJ and thus helps the parliament and thus helps the parliament in keeping a financial check in keeping a financial check on the executive a financial check on the executive dekho <coughs> what is the logic here i have told you and i have earlier also used the term or the office of the caj comptroller and auditor general of india i'll tell you the details of that office in one of our classes but he had just a passing statement on his office why we have an office of the caj that is the comptroller and auditor general of india what is the philosophy behind it the parliament approves or sanctions the amount to be given to the various ministries from the consolidated fund of india that we discussed during the discussion on budget <coughs> there is a demand for grants is approved by the parliament but after the parliament approves the amount after the amount or the money goes to the ministries whether the money has been used for the purpose for which it was sanctioned by the parliament or not this is a big question the ministries may have misused the money also the amount may have remained underutilized also so after sanctioning the amount there must be a mechanism with the parliament to ensure the utilization of the public money it is not that you just sanction it and your work is over and to help the parliament to know about the utilization under utilization misutilization of the amount that you have sanctioned we have the office of the cag that is the very purpose that is why auditing is done that is the basic philosophy it is not that the cag is a proactive organization why the cag is there the cag is to act as the eyes and ears of the parliament to put a check financial check on the executive that is the very philosophy of why we are having the cag then after the cag audits the report the finances then it prepares a report after auditing the finances of the various ministries it comes out with a report the cag comes out with a report this report is presented to the president in case of the central legislature a central government then what the president will do it the president will ensure that the report is presented in the parliament so the report is presented in the parliament because ultimately it was the parliament which has sanctioned the money that okay this parliament has sanctioned this much of and this is the audit report of the money that you had sanctioned and what the parliament will do it is not feasible on the part of the parliament to scrutinize the report word by word clauses by clauses the parliament refers it to the public accounts committee 
it refers to the public accounts committee this public accounts committee it scrutinizes the report of the cag and it presents another report it presents another report prepares another report and that report is the summary of the cag's report and only the misuse or under utilization of public money is highlighted there you where there has been misuse of public money just a highlight it highlights those things only and that is why we have, what we have written here is that the chairman of the public accounts committee is always from the opposition political party no where it is written it is a convention that we have started in this country that the chairman of the psa is always from the opposition why because the under utilization of money misuse of public money must have been done by the ruling party only so the chairman is always from the opposition political party and so another thing that we have written here is no minister can be a member of the public accounts committee and here is the same logic that the ministry is the ministers may have been involved in the misuse of public money under utilization of public money and that is why no minister can be a part or the member of the public accounts committee the public accounts committee is considered to be the most important committees of the parliament because of the reasons that i discussed with you then come into the estimates committee <coughs> the estimates committee it has 30 members it has 30 members 30 all from lok sabha all from lok sabha here comes you know first question for the prelims examination which parliamentary committee exclusively contains the members of the lok sabha the answer will be estimates committee no doubt it is a parliamentary committee but it exclusively consists of the members of the lok sabha only before we write something i'll tell you again the philosophy of the appropriate or we can say the estimates committee because if you know, understand the philosophy obviously you can know the purpose why these are there in a democracy or in a in a system like us obviously the people's representative have been given enormous powers so even if you people there is a lok sabha or the parliament has approved the budget obviously we have got the office of the caj we have got the public accounts committee but after the appropriation bill <coughs> is passed by the pa the parliament that is the appropriation act is enacted not during the discussion on appropriation bill because till it is not passed we are not sure that which ministry has been allocated how much of money there can be some deductions also so after the appropriation bill is passed and enacted then the estimates committee is constituted then the estimates committee is constituted after the appropriation bill is passed and enacted why it is constituted as the name suggests estimates what it has to do it has to prepare the estimates of the various ministries or the departments and it has to decide that in what manner 
the estimates of the particular ministry can be discussed in the Lok Sabha. It is not that 100, cro 100 crores have been allocated to this ministry. Oh, you take the money, do whatever you want to do. After the money has been allotted, an estimate has to be made. Just as after getting salary or those students who are more systematic, when you get, we can say, money from your parents, you make an estimate. This much of money for rent, this much for contingency purpose, this much for food, this much for, we can say, books. You make an estimate. Not all, some of you who are more planned. Now, why we make policy? Why we make an estimate? To have an idea. We, and when we make an estimate, it is we are making policies. That is how we will be using the money. How we will be using the money? Telephone bills, this much of money. Food, this much of money. Rent, this much of money. Electricity. We make an estimate. That is, we make policy. How we will be using the money? We do not follow it. That is a different thing. But yes, the policy is made. That is the work of the estimates committee. Technically speaking, the estimates committee will have to make the estimates of the various ministries. That okay, you have been allotted this much of money. This is your estimate. And then it has to be approved by the Lok Sabha again. So this estimates committee is associated with policy making of the country. But don't be very much concerned about these things. This is a useless committee. In practically I am saying. Because some of you may be feeling very good. Ah, what a country we have. Everything is controlled by the parliament. We have got a estimates committee. It will prepare the estimates of the various ministries. And all the ministries will do according to the wishes of the Lok Sabha. A useless thing. What the, what the ministers do? The ministers prepare the estimate of their committees. They just give it to the estimates committee. The estimates committee just approves it. Clear? I feel bad while discussing these things. But I discuss these things because if you will encircle certain points, you will get a job here and then you will feel happier. And that is why I discuss these things with you. So and that is why you see, I am not concerned about these committees. Okay, it is there. But you should also not be very much concerned about these things. We are reading it just to encircle the right point and to get some marks and if God favors, then we will get a job. It has 30 members, all from Lok Sabha. Then it prepares the estimates, <coughs> estimates related to the various ministries. And decides on the way the estimates are to be discussed, the estimates are to be discussed in the Lok Sabha in the Lok Sabha. It is constituted, it is constituted after the appropriation bill is passed and enacted. The appropriation bill is passed and enacted. It is associated with policy making of the country. 
it is associated with policy making of the country now coming to committee on public undertakings committee on public undertakings